Welcome to PlayStation's Crossbar, your home for everything FIFA related, whether you're a casual gamer or a hardcore player. We talk about Ultimate Team, FIFA and everything happening in the world of football. My name is Brandon Smith and joining me as always is that man Richard Buckley. And Richard, it's been a little while before we've recorded a Crossbar episode, hasn't it? And I mean, first and foremost, we haven't been able to see each other or travel to any events together. How have you been? I've been very well, thank you, Brandon. I've not been able to reach out and, and touch hands in a while, but through the power of the internet, through the power of PlayStation, we are still getting the job done. And I'll tell you what, FIFA has not slowed down in the last couple of months. We've had some unbelievable tournaments, unbelievable esports action, and also unbelievable action in the Open Series. Yeah, so much to talk about in today's episode of Crossbar. So without any further ado, we might as well head into the news. Well, 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 you said it perfectly, Richard. We're coming to the end of the cycle of FIFA 20. FIFA 21 is just so close and just round the corner now, which means new ratings, ratings refresh, so to speak. And Richard, there's been a couple of changes in the top 10 players on FOOT 21 this year. What's your thoughts on them and who's moved? Who's sort of gone down? Who's gone up and who's gone into the top 10? Yeah, I think... The one thing out of the ratings altogether that I'm taking away is the pace of the players has come down quite a few notches. You see Messi there, 85 pace, I think it is. He's come down a rating. Cristiano Ronaldo's come down a rating. Lewandowski has moved up. Third highest rated player in the game, 91 rated. Joining him, Oblak, Neymar and Kevin De Bruyne. And then three of the last four players in the top 10, all Liverpool. Mane, Salah and Van Dijk with the cover star himself, Kylian Mbappe, getting a move into the top 10 and that 90 rated player item. Yeah, and I've just got it in front of me here. De Stegen, Modric and Eden Hazard all out of that top 10 now. Of course, completely different seasons. Uh, and as you said, players have dropped down and moved on, so to speak, in their careers. The thing that worries me, Richard, is that we've had the pleasure of watching the likes of Messi and Ronaldo in all our sort of childhood years. And it's getting to that stage now where naturally, where they're getting older, that rating is soon rather than later going to have to change. I'm going to look towards FIFA 22, 23... You know, it sort of worries me a little bit. I guess we've got these fantastic rising players like Mbappe's coming through the ranks, Jao Felix, but it's, it's sort of sad as well because these guys are slowly going down in those ratings. Yeah, a lot of people thought that Cristiano Ronaldo's final year really as a viable player would have been last year, but this year he's still there. Great physical, great shooting and great pace alongside the five-star skill moves for CR7. He'll be a threat this year in FIFA, but with every new FIFA, we get different ratings and we also get new icons and there is some absolute crackers in the new icon selection. I think we had, was it 11 or 10 icons altogether taking up to 100 total icons in FIFA 21 and some of these new icons are going to change the game. Yeah, incredible. As you said, I think it was 12, 12 new icons that were guaranteed to be in uh, FIFA 21. We're looking forward to seeing, are any of these going to be playable in the Open Series potentially or in the competitive uh, Open Series, the Global Series? Fingers crossed that'll be back and bigger than ever next year. But let's have a look and highlight some of those new icons, Richard. I mean, as you said, we've got one man we need to kick off with. It's Eric Cantona. I mean, this man was hyped up to be in the game. What do you make of those three different items, of course, the base, the mid and the prime, maybe a prime icon moment in the future as well. What do you make of it? They're all remarkable. I mean, just look at the stats. Pace, exquisite on all three versions. Shooting, exquisite. Passing, dribbling. He's got 90 physical on all three versions of his icon. He is going to be remarkable. I think maybe more of a cam, personally, I would say. Cantona suiting better rather than an out-and-out -out striker, but Look, with heading as well, with the manual heading in FIFA 21, he is going to be outstanding. Another icon that I'm really looking forward to using. He, he's caused me nightmares in previous years. In FIFA, Samuel Eto'o is official. He is one of the icons in FIFA 21. And just look at the three versions, Brandon. 94 pace on the base. 
Yeah, pretty incredible, isn't it? I mean, I think the great thing about these is the question of who is going to make pros teams, who's going to make casual player teams, whether it's on ultimate team or a foot draft, you know, your opportunity to really try out these players. It's great to see attacking players come into it. I think sometimes we occasionally get the odd defender that we might not be too excited about or too over the moon with. However, there is one defender, uh, I believe Ashley Cole, that did get introduced and here is his items i think in terms of the general community the feel was that he probably deserved a little bit more i think the rating maybe a little bit higher 1991 i would have even said for his prime that base looks very good um great pace great defending i think it'll be probably quite cheap as well because the physical is quite low but that prime ashley cole We'll probably make pros teams 89 pace, 88 defending, 83 dribbling, 83 passing alongside 80 physical. And look, the final icon that we're going to show a highlight to here in this segment, an icon that I've been asking for years, an icon, there's an award named after him. Puskas is officially an icon. Look at those stats. The, the only thing that I can think, his stats look very similar to Eusebio's. We know how good Eusebio is. We're still waiting, I think, for the skill moves and the weak foot of a number of these icons. But those stats are outstanding. Yeah, they are indeed. And I mean, out of those four we've seen, Richard, is, is Puskas the number one target for you or anyone else you'd say is going to make your FIFA Ultimate Team? I'm sure they all would make it, but which one is on the top of your priority list out of those four? Look, if I can save up the coins, he's going to be expensive, Puskas. But if I can get either of those three versions in my team, I'll be very one happy man. You can just imagine if one of them is blessed with a decent skill move or a solid weak foot. It just makes them so much more viable off the bench or in starting teams for all of us FIFA players around the world. But again, 12 new icons in the game, a mix up with the new top 100 ratings in Foot 21 as well. So, so much exciting news coming up in that build-up to FIFA 21. However, there's more exciting news as well about the PlayStation Open Series, isn't there, Richard? There is indeed. The PlayStation Open Series is still going on right now. We've had some remarkable games. Basically, if you don't know what the Open Series is, it's an open tournament for anybody on the PlayStation. You can sign up. All you need to do, go to the link compete.playstation.com. That's compete.playstation.com. It's a link. You go to it, you sign up, you get involved, and you can win not only some prize money, not only FIFA points, but you get better at FIFA while you're doing it. Yeah, you do. And, and let's not forget that there's four tournaments that run weekly and then there's the monthly finals where we come out to play as we commentate on those finals. And remember, there's some serious money up for grabs as well. $1,000 for the grand finals. If you're wondering what you're playing for, alongside FIFA points with FIFA 21 around the corner, this will be your last chance to really get involved. And we must say uh, as well that we are going to be at those next finals. It's our September monthly finals that will be coming up just at sort of the start of October. October the 1st, we'll be commentating across both North America and Europe. So as I said, $1,000 at the end of the month, plus every single week, there's $600 worth of prize pot available, you know, for four weeks. So if you're a solid player and you win the lot, you know, you do the maths, you can walk away with some serious money, can't you? Absolutely. Yeah. Make sure you just tune into the monthly finals. Just have a watch of it. See what the, the competition is like. This isn't for pro FIFA players. You're not going to see MS Tassari, Mo Alba, Stefano Pina competing in these tournaments, but you, it's a an option for you to elevate your game, to get better against players who might be better than you, might be aspiring pro players. This is the step. You go from casual to semi-professional. That's what I like to call it. It's the building blocks. Get yourself some prize money, get yourself some competitive experience and get signed up. Once again, compete.playstation.com. Go to the account, link your ESL account and your PlayStation Network account. And that is it. Simple. Couple of steps and you're signed up. Yeah, it's as simple as that. Get yourselves involved. Whether you're a casual player, an experienced player, you just fancy giving it a go. The PlayStation Open Series is for you. It runs all the way until the end of this year as well. 31st of December is the cutoff date. And speaking of which, Richard, we've spoken about the PlayStation Open Series. Why don't we recap what has happened over the last couple of weeks uh, in the PlayStation Open Series? <laughs> 
Well, we've had the absolute pleasure, Richard, of being involved in this tournament since it kicked off in June. It kicked off the 1st of June was when this tournament did kick off. So if you look correctly, we've had three monthly finals up to this very point in September. And again, it's been a fantastic whirlwind of talent we've seen from North America and from Europe. We've seen so many different results and so many different winners. We're going to be taking a focus on August's grand finals because we had even more surprises, didn't we? We did indeed. We can have a look at the bracket right now from the North American August monthly finals and see how it broke down when we got through to the quarter final stages. It was a remarkable tournament. You see a lot of low scoring affairs. That's because the games are played over one leg. Micro Nacho beating Axnell there, four goals to three in his first quarter final tie. C. Lopez and Athletic, two players, familiar names. You'll see as we do more and more shows. The names are familiar because they're the ones who are constantly getting involved, competing and making money as well. And in the end, C. Lopez beat Edrico season 2-0 in the final. But what a tournament it was, Brandon. Yeah, unbelievable scenes. If you don't know how this is played, it is on online friendly. So no fee for Ultimate Team for these tournaments. So you're looking at either France, Liverpool, maybe Piemonte Calcio or... FC Barcelona, who C. Lopez used. The great thing is we are going to be breaking down that North American final in just a couple of minutes' time. However, let's look at Europe. What went down in Europe in the Open Series in our grand finals last month? And it was this new sort of kid on the block that a lot of people have hyped about outside of the Open Series in the Global Series. And that's Levy de Weed, a Dutch wonder kid. He plays for Team Hullet. You must know Rude Hullet, an icon in the game, an icon from the pitch as well. He set up his own esports organization and Levy de Weed, I think only just turned 16 recently, Richard. So now he's eligible to compete. And that was the first time we've seen him in action and he just absolutely run away with it. Yeah, the not only the results, but when we do break it down a little bit later on, the way that he was winning, he beat Zach Moore, who is one of the best FIFA coaches in the world, a professional FIFA player as well. You know, the likes of Gorilla, yeah? Huge Gorilla, Neo Gorilla, Stokes as well. These players have won trophies in the past. He was their coach, Zach Moore, and Levy Deweed made him look ordinary in that matchup. He then won the final four goals to nil, and we're going to have the privilege to look at some of those goals in greater detail and really look why and how he was so successful in August monthly finals. Yeah, alongside that, both our finalists did pick up $400. So some serious money on the line for those guys, alongside 12,000 FIFA points. So if you haven't already, get yourselves involved in the Open Series. So much talent, so much action. Speaking of goals, Richard, there were so many of those in the month of August. Have a look at this, because we've taken our best pick of all the goals that went in over the four weeks. And you speaking of these teams, it looks like... Traditional 4-2-3-1 as always. Mendy out on that right hand side. Lucas Hernandez in a left back. Other than that, you're looking at your standard French lineup. Messi. Unless there is someone else in it right back for Cize Season. Kingsley Coleman into Mbappe. Is there one more pass? Possession will change hands once again. But the reason why this guy's been getting a lot of attention, Levy, is. I think he went on like a mad run, maybe 120 and I might have actually been a lot bigger than that. And I want to be giving him the credit that he deserves. But he did not lose a game for quite a few weekends. We said Rico season, Athletic, C Lopez, King CJ, Cisse season. The users, they'll be in action. All of them will be. I'll tell you what though, this game is full of goals. Anton Griezmann back on the scores. We're probably looking at 1-0. Neither of these two can even break each other down. And Pogba linking up well. Ben Yedda, Mbappe, oh, Beautiful. reverse elastic. Oh, that's what that man's all Look at that space. Dembele on the far hand side. Also, there's a dart and run being made there. Lovely little dink into Mbappe to conclude the tie. Mbappe scores. And it looks like Forte. A new man to the month of August in the open. Ketta got away from his man. For me, uh, I think. Uh, yes, centre back wise, they could probably have a little bit more pace about them, Barcelona. Though they probably need another winger in their mix as well. And this is not even Ultimate Team. You know, Ultimate Team is a completely different sort of speed and dynamic that it offers you. Sort 
team of the seasons, prime icon moments, Coleman, he's dancing. And there we have it. Those are just some of our favourite goals from the month of August. Richard, it's too hard to call which one is our personal favourites because there was just so many that were scored last month. Yeah, some fantastic goals, some great strikes and some really tricky um, sort of skill moves as well, showing how good the quality is here on the Open Series. And if you are just watching those goals, that's just a taster of what you can expect here on the PlayStation Open Series. Well, we've already alluded to it, Richard, in terms of the two players that won the monthly finals last month in August. We had a North American winner in C. Lopez with FC Barcelona, and then we had Levy de Weed, who did win with France, the beloved team that everyone loves to use in terms of the Open Series. We're going to break down both of their games individually. So let's go and have a look at the North American final first. It was between FC Barcelona, who was, of course, C. Lopez, and Enrico Season, who played as France. So I just want to highlight a couple of areas in the game, kicking off first and foremost with the teams that were used in the grand final and how they were set up. I mean, we'll have a look first and foremost at how France has been used. And you've just seen a quick uh, freeze frame of how it's looking. It's actually a 4 4 1 1 that France are using. The usual back four, Larice in goal as always. Your two centre midfielders in N'Golo Kante and Paul Pogba. And then what's interesting here, he's got Mbappe out as a left midfielder. Usman Dembele, yes, he can play on the right side. Griezmann in that number 10 role. And then as we know, Ben Yedda leading the line with a five-star weak foot, the five-star skill moves. He's just... Is that the way you use France, Rich, in your opinion? Because we've seen a lot of people use France. Yeah, I think for me, it has to be a 4-2-3-1. You get Mbappe further forward in the game, whether that's as a wide attacking midfielder or a central player. And I just think you see that freeze frame right there. Look how much room both Usman Dembele and Messi has on the ball. Because you're not playing with central defensive midfielders, because you're playing with central midfielders, it means that the attacking players of your opponent can get so much more room on the ball. And for me, I just don't think 4-4-1-1 is viable. No, it certainly was was an interesting one. And we'll, we'll look as the match goes on to wide Rico season. Couldn't put together a formation, the tactics that he wanted to use to try and win the game. Let's flip it on its head then. Let's have a look at C. Lopez. What is this winning formula that we've talked about a couple of times in terms of FC Barcelona? What is it about this Barcelona side that is just so good? And it's the winning formula. It's the winning formation. It's the 4-2-3-1 that is being implemented here of FC Barcelona. It's always a treat when we get to see them in the Open Series. Mark andre to Stegen in goal, your usual back line. You've got Semedo, you've got Alba, you've got really good sort of attacking fullbacks that offer you so much. Your two CDMs in Frankie de Jong and Arturo Vidal. But then which is where the key point is. You can just see Messi on the edge of the box there. It's so important that everything goes through Lionel Messi in that team, Richard. Yeah, it really is. And look, you see Suarez at the bottom of the pitch. He's sacrificed. He's pushed out onto wide attacking midfield, is Luis Suarez, to get Messi on the ball. And the game was won through Leo Messi. Yeah, everything went through the Argentine up top. We're going to have a look at the first goal in just a second. You'll see it now. Everything via Messi. You see, first of all, he gets on the ball, pops it off, makes his attacking movement off the ball, gets back on the ball again. We know he's got skills. We know he's got flair to his game. But just the quick interchanges, Richard, the give and go. And look at this run that he continues to make and the finish that he gives us as well. Yeah, I just want to stop it there if we can. So he takes the ball roll inside the box. He's away from Clement Langley. All right, this is where split-second decision-making. He can either do what he does and shoot on his right foot, taking into the calculations. Messi has got a four-star weak foot. He's left-footed. He's predominantly left-footed. He might hit it outside of the foot shot. He might sky it. The goalkeeper might save it, all with the right boot. Or he can try and execute a drag back and play onto his left foot. You see what he does right here. This is composure and this is confidence in your player. Leo Messi, right foot, top net. Yeah, unbelievable seeds. And speaking of Messi again, Richard, we can just highlight here in terms of how Messi is just on the ball all the time. His attacking movements that he's making and just getting involved in attacks. This ball comes in just a second. He has two chances in at goal. Vidal drops it back inside. Messi there. Messi's in the centre. And the fact that when you've got a four-star weak foot and you can be brave and take shots off, it just gives you confidence. Yeah, I mean, it gives you so much confidence. You saw quickly there the stats. 66% possession with 90 five plus percent passing accuracy it was as dominant a first half as you're ever going to get 
Usman Dembele, beautiful fake shot, and that's why Usman Dembele is in the team. Five-star weak foot, five-star skill moves. He's agile, he's slippery like an eel, and he will not be held down inside the box. And it wasn't just the attacking prowess of these players that made Barcelona and C. Lopez win the game, as we'll see in our next uh, segment now. I really wanted to highlight Arturo Vidal and Frankie de Jong, the two CDMs in this 4 2 3 1. If we could just sort of highlight their movement, you see there, he might not win the ball, but he's always pressing. That's de Jong that makes the first little block. You see Vidal straight on the back of Ben Yedder there. And then this is the really important one at the end. It was an offside call for Mbappe, but it was just again that attacking run inside of de Jong just to pile the pressure on to make sure everything was rushed. And I think that was a really good thing that made the 4 2 3 1 the viable formation, the winning formation for C. Lopez in the game. And it also just highlights the position changing as well. What I mean by that is how quickly he's moving players. This is the reward for Arturo Vidal after a great defensive display. Smashed it in on the edge of the box. But it was a perfect performance from C. Lopez. He got Messi on the ball. That's rule number one with Barcelona. Vidal and De Jong need to press high up the pitch. They did that. And defensively, he kept a clean sheet. Great day at the office for C. Lopez. Yeah, and his first ever Open Series victory as well for the Mexican there. Huge congratulations to him for picking up that result. We did allude to earlier, his semi-final game, he was down to 10 men like 15 minutes into the time. He still hung on, Richard, to go and win that game in extra time. So he deserves a lot of credit, uh, does C. Lopez there. Huge congratulations on the win alongside the $400 that he did pick up. But now let's turn our attentions over to Europe now, Richard, and that grand final that took place there with Levy de Weed from uh, of course, the Netherlands. He played as France. It was a great grand final, this one. He was up against uprising Chris, who was using Liverpool. Interesting. Yes, uh, very, very uh, sort of similar scenario where we've seen France against a different team. Usually it's France against France, and you see the Liverpool side there lining up. Virgil van Dijk on the ball. He's arguably the best centre-back on the game. That's why Liverpool are sort of used. They've got pace up front and they've got pace in the defence. Robertson, Virgil, Gomez, Trent. In the midfield, Fabinho, usually partnering alongside Gini Wijnaldum. And then going forward, you have Firmino, Salah, Mane, all scoring the goals. In terms of the France team, the only thing I need to see right there, look at that team. Ben Yedder in at Cam, Mbappe at striker, and then you have... Coleman, Dembele out wide. This is the 4-2-3-1 that I like to see used. Kante and Pogba holding the positions with Ben Yedder just in behind Mbappe. For me, that's the way that you play with France. Yeah, it's the way to play, it seems, with this team, in all honesty, Richard. And, you know, an unbelievable lineup for him with France. It was a, a winning formation for him. Again, a viable team that he did select in this 4-2-3-1. Really impressive performance. We're going to have a look at the goal that was scored. And just have a look at this through ball from Dembele. I know you're going to talk about it in just a second, Richard, but here, out from the goal kick and just watch this. Yeah, we'll, we'll let it play on a couple of seconds. Let's pause it now if we can. So you saw the minimap. The minimap was the key to this goal. It's something, it, it might seem obsolete. You might not even think about looking at the minimap. But when he got the ball out wide with Lucas Hernandez, he saw Mbappe's run. You might think, well, how did he see it? Couple of things. A, Looking at the minimap, you can make the minimap bigger. You can put it on 3D. Two, change your camera angle. This is a massive thing. If you see more of the pitch, a lot of pro players will play on co-op. They see all of the pitch available to him. You can then play these passes. And three, you're playing in killing Mbappe. Probably the quickest striker in head-to-head -head in the uh, Open Series tournament format. One of the best strikers, if not the best striker, you still see the clip play out here. As soon as away from Van Dijk, there is absolutely no catching him. And Levy de Weed makes sure of it outside of the right boot into the bottom right corner. Clinical from the Dutchman. It was a perfect start as well for the Dutchman, Richard. 15 minutes in with Mbappe. He was just scoring goals for fun in that grand final. One thing I loved as well was how compact he was in this 4-2-3-1. We'll be able to potentially see that of just how he's been able to set up and how good he's been at the back. It's just such a hard formation to break down. This was the second goal that he did go and score. A lovely little build-up play. Did really well in the end to get a very fortunate deflection. Don't get me wrong there. And it's a simple tap in at the back post to make that two goals for the good. Mbappe bags himself a brace. And the goals just didn't stop there. The goals just kept flowing in. And look at Pogba right there. So composed on the ball. Ben Yedder in at Cam. And this is just confidence. This is composure. This is a young man playing his best FIFA 
probably in his life right now. So crisp, so intricate, the passing. Everything's got a purpose. It's snappy in the final third. And it was a truly magnificent performance from Levy de Weed. Just look at this fourth goal. Oh, what a cross. What a cross. It's easy. As easy as you like, Richard. $400. And I think the passes were just remarkable from Levy. Seeing passes that we did not even see. Mbappe bags himself a hat trick. And Levy de Weed bags himself $400 and the championship for the month of August in the Open Series. A huge congratulations to our North America North American, I should say, and European winners. And Richard, another month in the book. That's our third monthly finals wrapped up. And we're seeing new winners. We're seeing new talent come to the Open Series month after month. We're seeing new winners. We're seeing more players as well than ever get signed up. I feel like the quality is rising every single week on month that we have these tournaments. And I cannot wait to see what the future holds for the Open Series. Yeah, certainly. I'm looking forward to that. And you're probably thinking at home, you've watched this Crossbar episode, you've watched a few of our episodes, you're thinking, it's a little bit different this one to normal. There's there's to be some different sort of, uh, sort of, as I say, different subjects we've looked at in terms of the open series. We've been looking at FIFA 21 news, but we've gone as far at PlayStation to give Richard his own segment. Rich, would you like to introduce your, your first own segment to a show? I mean, you've got the professor right here of FIFA. And I'm going to give you a little tip. You see Levy de Weed winning with France. This is how he won. This is how I would line up the first ever Rick's tapes with FIFA 20. You're staying ahead of the competition. The team selection process is vital. This for me will always be France. You can see what the France team looks like there. On the overview let's jump into it and have a look at the greater details and what really makes this France team fantastic starting at the back Hugo Lloris one of the best goalkeepers on the game in head-to-head -head. your two centre-backs Clement Lenglet Rafa Varane both great pace and great defensive stats between them at fullback this is sometimes where you see different players for me Lucas Hernandez 79 pace, great defending and physical, and also Benjamin Mendy at left back are the best options. At CDM, Kante and Pogba, two outstanding CDMs. You see the work rates there. High attack, medium defence for Pogba. He's going to be the CDM who gets a little bit further forward. N'Golo Kante, medium um, attack work rate and high defensive, meaning that he's going to be the central defensive midfielder sitting back. Your three central attacking mids. You see Griezmann on the bench. That's because Ben Yedder is going to start. Central attacking midfield, five-star weak foot. Another player who's got five-star weak foot and now five-star skill moves, Usman Dembele. Completing that attacking front three is Kingsley Coleman with killing Mbappe. I will be the best striker on the game at central striker. Just going into the instructions quickly. Stay central, getting behind for Mbappe. All three cams, stay forward. Your two CDMs. I've just got them on a balanced attack on Pogba and stay back or attacking. Both of these two players have cover centre on. For the fullbacks, stay back or attacking, nothing else. For the tactics, this is quite a defensive 4-2-3-1 uh, that I've set up. Drop back for width for depth on this particular custom tactic preset. One on corners, two on free kicks. You don't want to get counter-attacked on. This, for me, is the best way to use France in head-to-head -head FIFA. And if you do use France, make sure that you did it the Buckley way. Well, that's my first ever Rich's tips before, and I might be doing it the Buckley way. I'll have to be honest with you there, Richard. I might have to be using France in the Buckley way in the next Open Series. I thoroughly enjoyed that. I mean, it, I mean, France are the team to use, aren't they? I'm looking forward to seeing what other teams you could break down in the future. But you spoke about it briefly there. Who's your sort of danger man in that France side, in your opinion? Is it Ben Yedder? Is it Mbappe? Who's, who's the danger man for you? He's got to be Ben Yedder. He's the sort of focal point of everything in at central attacking midfield. A lot of the goals actually come from Ben Yedder. It's Mbappe doing an elastic or reverse elastic or double tap pass into Ben Yedder. And Ben Yedder tends to score. If you are using France like that, make sure you tweet me or Brandon and let us know that you did it the Buckley way. I'm looking forward to seeing if anyone does get involved in on social media on that one. But that is a wrap for another episode of Crossbar. I've been Brandon Smith. That man's been Richard Buckley. We've spoken about icons. We've spoken about new ratings in FIFA 21. Our two champions for the month of August in Levy de Weed and C. Lopez. And all we've got to say is goodbye. We'll be back again next month for another episode of Crossbar. And more importantly, for more FIFA action. Until next time, stay safe, stay at home.
and I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.